Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, and this is Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. I was the head coach of the Punahou Boys varsity tennis team for 22 years, and we were fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. This show is based on my books, Beyond the Lines and Beyond the Game, and it's about leadership, character, and creating a superior culture of excellence. My special guest today is our legendary Hawaii entertainer who signed an unprecedented $1 million contract with the Kahala Hilton in 1967, which led to him performing there for the next 30 years. He is Danny Kalekini, and today we are going beyond aloha. Hey, Danny, welcome to the show. Aloha, come here, look here. Hi, umo ke o kai ne kapunu. Hi, Danny. So good to have you on the show today. And I wanna, I wanna first by asking you, what does the ukulele represent? Ukulele represents the people of the world. Four strings, you know, and each string black, brown, yellow, white, and you know brings. And you know, if you play it by yourself, you get a sound. But if you play it together. You know, you get, you get harmony, you get ohana, you get family. And I think that's most important. And I think, you know, I got my ukulele here. But, you know, let me just give you a little. Wow, that's so good. It, it does bring the people together. And ukulele is so unique. And oh, yeah. Danny, I want to ask you about Linda Wong. She's been your partner for over 30 years. And you guys make such a great team together. I absolutely love Linda. What what do you admire about her? Well, you know, Linda is Akamai. She, you know, she knows business. She, she knows, you know, and I think it's important, you know, well, guys like me, yeah, I'm, I'm popularly a boy, you know, and the, I know street smart, you know, nobody can fool around with me because I broke your ukulele. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're right. Linda's so smart, so and she's so professional. And Danny, I, I want to ask you about you grew up in Papakalea. And then you ended up at the Kahala Hilton signing that $1 million contract with the general manager, Bob Burns. And how did that make you feel when you signed that contract? Well, I got to tell you, I thank God. I, I was very blessed. And, you know, but it's working with people like Mr. Burns who gave, it, gave me that opportunity to do it. Otherwise, you know, I would ne never have done it. But and the people that I work with, you know, it, we all work together as Ohana, as family. And I think that is the key to, you know, coming together with, with, with whoever you work with and whoever the family is. And we all, we all, every, after every show, we would, you know, get together after the show and talk story and, and cook on and what, 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 what is good. What wasn't good? What what did we do wrong tonight? What you know? What could be done? And I think that is so important. And and the, everybody gotta come together as Ohana as family. You get one individual that thinks she's better than the other one, then it's gonna be very difficult. But you know, we all came together. We all worked together. We, you know, we put our put our ideas together. I like this. I didn't like this. Oh, we should try this. Maybe not. You know, but. Unless that was part of it. And I think you got to sit down and cook all, you got to talk story. Otherwise, it, you're never going to solve the problem. Yeah. And, and Danny, you know, that I, what I find so uh, fascinating is, you know, it's very difficult to achieve success, but it's even more difficult to sustain success. And that's what you've done. And I want to ask you about this because most people play the flute with their mouth. You played a nose flute. I mean, that that's so incredible that you played a nose flute. How did that happen? My grandfather, you know, he was, uh, he taught me Hawaii of yesteryear. And, uh, and, you know, the flute was there, but he never taught anybody. He, just, he waited to, 
one of us, you know, picked it up and it because nobody wanted to play. It was too hard. It was very difficult to play, you know. So one day I just I went by, you know, I, I came by, I said, oh, but I would try. Let me see what happened. And this is what happened. Oh, Danny, that that's incredible. That so you have a you have a nose for talent. Is that it? That's it. Some people have a voice. I have a nose for talent. <laughs> <laughs> now, Danny, you performed alongside many celebrities, including Dolly Parton. Oh, and yeah. what 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 is it about you entertaining audiences that you enjoyed so much? I think most important, you know, you got to share that aloha. And if you have the aloha and you share it with other people, it's, it's, it comes out, you know, comes out for real, you know, but if you try to, you know, put it on and, you know, think you, you're going to get with it, it doesn't work. Because aloha is a breath of life and love that we share with one another. And aloha comes from the pu'uai, of the heart. And you can tell. If it comes from the heart, bro, or you're just doing it just for for the hell of it. But you know, I share the law because I believe in it. Aloha is the breath of life and love that we share with one another. No, oh, I love that. You you are. I mean, in I mean, it's it's fascinating to see how many celebrities would want to come to your show, including the great Sylvester Stallone. I mean, at that time, he came out with all of his Rocky movies. I mean, how was it meeting somebody like uh, Sylvester Stallone who became one of your friends? He's for real. You know, I get to meet a lot of celebrities. I get to meet a lot of big stars. And, you know, some people you can tell right away, they're just the way, hi, Maka Maka. You know, they have no, no, no time for you, no talent, but the people that I met, they were all for real, and everything they did came from the pu'uai, from the heart. And you know, and you know me, I'm, I'm local moko, so I'm not going to change. You know, I, 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 That's took, how it, it is, local moko. <laughs> and Danny, Tom Selleck, I mean, the original Magnum <laughs> PI, I mean, would come to your shows. I mean, show. how, how was yeah. Tom Selleck? Oh, he was, he was like, he was like a brother, you know. He was like us. He was, he was he was brother, you know. And we could we could talk story, and you know, I could talk to him like one local guy. I guess. But you know, he he was he was for real, you know. He was for real. You know? Well, it, it's amazing how you know we have the the new Magnum PI nowadays. Um, but you also would mingle and be friends with Jack Lord and the original Hawaii Five O gang. I mean, how was it seeing them, you know, consistently at your shows? Well, you know, being an entertainer and being, you know, who I was, you know, we could all talk story and we, you know, we could relate to one another and, you know, and, it, you know, Jack Lord was, he was good for Hawaii, you know, Hawaii Five O, And then Zulu, you know, Zulu work, you know, but we could all, we could all come together, sit down, cook up, talk story. What, what we like, what we don't like. But most important is that, you know, we did it because we wanted to see, you know, whatever we did, Hawaii would, you know, come first. And then, you know, we come later, but we wanted to show people that the reason we're here, because we want, we're proud of Hawaii and we want Hawaii to be, you know, the front runner, you know. And Danny, I, I know that you performed luau shows with the great Hilo Hattie, in, in in Waikiki and what what are what something that you learned from Hilo Hattie? She taught me how to speak English. <laughs> I would MC the show and I go, and now the girls gonna come together. They gonna whack the bamboo and you know, and they gonna do the dance for you. And she goes, young man, come here. So you know, she was a school teacher. You know that. You know, she yeah. school. She says, young man, you cannot speak the way. Nobody understands what you're saying. You know, the girls come up, coming up and they 
if they're going to play with the uli uli, the bamboo, that's what it is. And the, the, and she says, you cannot say they're going to walk the, walk the bamboo together. She said, you got to say the uli uli, the Hawaiian bamboo. But she she really taught me how to MC and she taught me how to speak English. I was like, you know, I was, I was good. Okay, the girls won't come dance. They're going to dance and they're going to, they're going to play the uh, the, the ball together and whack them. You blow them. No, and, and, and so Danny, I know that you attended Royal Elementary School and then you went to Kawananakoa and then to Roosevelt and then to University of Hawaii. I mean, it's it's amazing to, to see your journey, but you also, when you first, when you're really young, you started working selling newspapers and shining shoes, right? Yeah, the hotel street, right, right by Hawaii Theater. Yeah, but that was one way of, uh, you know, income and and whatever I made that day I took drawn to to my mom and, you know that was part of you know uh, Ohana Koko and but you know we needed a lot of help we could get you know because my mom was a cocktail waitress and my dad worked for the city and county rubbish man but we, you know we all came together Ohana and everybody whatever we made we put it in a pot and then you know and everybody could share it you know. So Danny, how, how did you know, or when did you know that, that you had a really great voice, uh, you know, for singing, to pursue singing? I thank God, you know, just, you know, singing in, in the church choir, you know, with, with Reverend Akaka and Danny Akaka was our musical director. And then, you know, not knowing that, you know, singing and learning that, that I could use this outside of the church, you know, and. I was uh, I was very fortunate, you know, to sing on the sidewalk, you know, and uh, uh, you know, just I used to sell newspapers by Hawaii Theater, and as I got through, me and the other brother, we go by the corner and he played ukulele. I start singing, and, and people would throw, you know, throw quarters, nickels, and you know, oh, man, we were rich. <laughs> <laughs> And Danny, Danny, in 1988, Governor John Whitehehe appointed you as the ambassador of Aloha. I mean, how how special is that? How did that make you feel, knowing that everyone really just, I mean, looks at you as Mr. Ambassador of Aloha? Well, you know, I was so proud coming from where I came from, Hopokulea, Hawaiian homestead, and you know, my mother and father, my, my dad was a rubbish man sitting county. My mother was a cop to waitress, and we had 10 in the family. But that was, was a great honor for me, and you know, and being who I was and coming from where I came from. But you know, I had on the job training. I learned how to entertain, how to sing on the sidewalk, and then you know, learning from other people, watching other people because. I wasn't the only guy singing on the sidewalk and other people performing, you know, they, with the ukulele. And I would watch them and learn. And that was so important, you know. We can learn from everyone. I think that, that you know, if we can just listen. Some of, some of our young people, they're so talented, but hard hit, you know, real po'opakiki. Unless you tell them, brother, you cannot do that. It's, you know. Well, what I like what, what you're doing, you know. So, and some of them didn't like what I said. So I just said, no, but just tell him, bro, you, you're good. You, you, you're very talented, but unless you, you keep doing the right way, I said, you know, you, you're, going down the, you're going down the toilet. I said, well, but some of, you know, the young people, they need, they just need cocoa, you know, they need a lot. No, and, and you know, Danny, it's it's amazing how many um, young entertainers you've inspired, you know, through these decades. I mean, just, I mean, that has to make you feel special too. And oh, yeah. and Danny, I want to I wanna bring this up. I, mean, I want to thank you and Linda Wong for doing such a generous book donation of my Beyond the Lines book. 
to coach oh, oh. Kale Ane and his entire McKinley varsity football team. I mean, that, that was so special a few weeks ago, how we went there together to, to donate the books. And then I, I spoke to the whole team and your grandson, Nick, is an assistant coach with them as well. Yes. You know, I'm so proud of him. And, you know, he's, uh, I'm, I really wanted him to, to go to Kamehameha, but he couldn't get in. So he had, he attended Punahou. He got a great education. And then from there, he went to Hamilton College in Syracuse. You know, he's a great, great musician, you know. And, uh, oh, yeah, by far. I mean, and, and you know, what I, what I like is how Coach Kale, Nick, and all the assistant coaches, they're all really trying to build this culture of excellence with the McKinley football team. And okay. you, you know that in my books, I, I talk about that superior culture of excellence. And that's something that you have built through those 30 years with your shows, because, because of you, you know, you're, you're basically employing your, all the musicians in your band, the hula dancers, I mean, the wait, the waiters, the waitresses, the bus boys, I mean, they're all benefiting from your shows, right? Well, the key was we all worked together. After the show, we would all come together after the show. You know, everybody, the waiters, the bus boys, and we sit down and we talk and say what we did wrong, what we did right. And I would tell them, brother, no, no wait too long because the people wanted the coffee and so I had to go give them, go, you know, take coffee for them. I says, just, you know, give them service and give them the law. I says, the more law and the more service we give them, the more better we'll be. And, you know, we all worked and, you know, everybody says, oh, yeah, uncle. Okay. So I says, I says, if we do this and we do it right, we're going to be here for a long time. You know, and I wow, so they, so some of the waitresses would, would tell you maybe some songs that they didn't like. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They would, they would tell me about, oh, Danny, that number, junk. <laughs> <laughs> I said, really? Yeah. Nobody like that number. I said, okay, I'm going to take them out. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's interesting because you're right. I mean, it was a total team effort. I mean, oh. you're, you're a reflection of all of them and they're a reflection of you. And is it true that a lot of the uh, that the tips that you were getting, you would share that with all of them as well. Oh, oh yeah, of course. You know, we, we did it all on a family because that's the only way. When you know you can stick together, and you know, and we were very fortunate. People would you know would live leave tip for us, and I said, okay, guys, here we go. Everybody here, here's your dollar, here's your two dollar, here, you know. But everybody was happy, you know. We just you know. But I think it was so important that to show them that we do care and that, that that we come out and we you know we family, and you know the more we the more family we are, the, the more better we'll be. And you know, and look how long we stayed over there. You know. And Maybe. Danny, what you know because of the location. I mean, Kahala is outside of Waikiki, and a lot of the tourists obviously love to stay in Waikiki. How was it where they started to really have to stay at the Kahala and, and because they wanted to see you perform? I used to take me, my, my two, two musicians, my holy girls, and we would go down Waikiki where the wall is and, you know, play music. And, and they would dance and I, I would sing and I said, oh, you know, come to the Kahala because nobody knew where the Kahala was. I said, you know, come to the Kahala. It's down at the very end of Diamond Head. And I said, we have a beautiful Hawaiian show, and we'd like to share this with you. And I was going down every morning on Waikiki, right by the wall, right standing outside on the sidewalk, play my ukulele and my, you know, my hula dancers and my guitar player. And that was the beginning and the start of it. And uh, I never, I never regretted what I did. You know, I, I because I enjoyed what I did. And that oh, that's me. that's brilliant marketing right there. Great advertising. And Danny, you know, you performed at Caesar's Palace. I mean, you were the opening act for the famous oh, I... Paul Anka. I mean, 
I mean, there's not too many people that can say that they performed at Caesar's Palace. Now, when you performed there, were you nervous the first time? Are you kidding? <laughs> I was really nervous. I mean, you know, and uh, but the people, the people were so nice, you know. And I got to be Paul Anka was, I mean, he was terrific. You know, he, he told me, he says, Danny. Get out there and kick their ass. <laughs> <laughs> no, and that, I mean, that kind of encouragement, I mean, because he believed in you and I guess he's wanting you to believe in yourself too. And, and Danny, you, all, you were also in movies. I mean, you, perf you're in a movie with the great Charleston Heston. Oh, yeah. I mean, how, how crazy is that? I mean, he was he's like a legendary movie actor how you know, was it for you being in that movie with him oh i gotta be honest you know i, I was so i was so frightened you know because you know I had, I had to speak i had a speaking part you know but they made it very comfortable and 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 Charleston told me daddy relax this you know your lines you know just do it it's just, We'll get nervous, you know, and and, you, and keep that beat, you know. Don't don't get it any higher than what it is. You know, what they made it comfortable, and I think that's so important. You know, that you know, you know, you have guys like that that that, that care about you. One, and that that made a big difference. Big oh. difference. Oh, I like that, and and in that movie. Didn't you arrest him in the movie? Was that the role that you played? Yeah. 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 <laughs> the arrest. And, you know, I, I was supposed to handcuff him and the handcuff fell down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that was so funny. <laughs> so you have to take two, take three, take four. <laughs> that was a big joke. <laughs> Where's the handcuff? Oh, what if he would fall down? <laughs> And Danny, I, I want to ask you about you and Linda, the your Kahalu fish pond. I mean, I, I was with you guys out there and it is absolutely beautiful. It is special. It It's a 42 acre property. Aye. The thir 35 acres are yeah. the fish pond. And you guys have had a beautiful little chapel there. I mean, you guys have what you're connected with Watabe weddings. I mean, it's absolutely beautiful. It's old Hawaii. And how long did it take you and Linda to, to clean up that property? Forever. <laughs> Forever. It was, you know, but, but we, we both, both of us, almost two years, you know, just every day, I would get into the fish pond, take out all the opala, all the, you know, and, and then what's so nice is, some of the people that saw us working that lived on there, you know, they said, Oh, can we help you guys? I said, Oh, yeah, brother, come. We need all the help. And they came down, they helped us. One guy drove the bulldozer, you know, because I don't know, I don't know how to drive a bulldozer. I mean, it, it was done family style and, and and look what it is today, you know, but just to Malama on the Aina, the, the caring of the land is so important. Oh, I, I mean, it, it's so peaceful. I mean, out, out there, I mean, you could just feel positive energy. I mean, being with you and Linda, I'm thinking, gosh, this is so, I love it. We spent the whole day out there and, and not too many people can, can see that unless they're connected with the weddings or, you know, because it's a private, it's a private property from you guys, but you know, it's, it's ancient Hawaii, right? It's, yeah, the last of yesteryear. And, you know, when I, I would go down and go clean the place, Malama, you know, got to pick, pick up the rubbish, pick, uh, the, you know, cut down the weeds. And, you know, I would go by this tree and the tree would talk to me and, and tell me that, you know, but they're really happy with what we're doing and that, you know, Malama on Ainek, what was a lady's voice? She, you know, she would. I thought I was going. To, what is this? Man? I cannot look it all around. But all she says was, 
you know, keep the place malamo on the end, keep the place clean, you know, make sure nobody hunt the email the place and that, you know, thank you for and yeah, uh, it, it's absolutely special. I mean, no, I, I, it's so spiritual. I, I mean, I, I completely believe you in everything that we right there and what we, we've talked about that many times. Um, and I, I love that you guys are keeping that property ancient Hawaii. And, and Danny, tell me more about the power of Aloha, because I, I know that you I mean that's your legacy you're you're the you're the ambassador of Aloha but it it can't just be you you want more people to really share the Aloha spirit right yes and I think we all have to do that Aloha is the breath of life and love that we share with one another and Aloha comes from the pu'uai from the heart and I think that's so important and especially for our young people you know, you got to educate them, you know, and share this with them and tell them, you know, Aloha is so important. And when you grow up, you know, you grow up older, I said, you know, with the Aloha, you, you will be very successful and, you know, you can help everybody. And, you know, the thing is, we all got to come together as one family, Ohana. And that's so important, you know, and the, I learned this from my grandfather, my grandmother, and all of them. And coming from Popopole, Hawaiian homestead, we had 10 in the family. And, you know, we we never had much, but we had aloha and we had love for one another. And I think that's so important. Well, Danny, you, you've definitely inspired me through many of these years. And you have you have positively impacted countless countless people throughout these decades and i just really want to thank you for taking time to join me on the show today it was an absolute honor having you on i'm honored to be with you you, you have a good show everybody watches your show are you kidding <laughs> you know we have this, this saying aloha kikahi ikikahi the love that we share with one another and you know that's, that's so important what you're doing you know, getting people, the local people, the Malahini, the newcomer, you know, just to share that aloha with everyone, especially for the local people. Some of them forget, you know, and, you know, I keep telling, brother, aloha is the breath of life and love we share with one another. What you think you're doing? You think you're better than me, you know? I mean, I've gone through this so many times and... <laughs> the love that we share with one another. Well, Danny, I'm going to thank you so much. I'm going to try to share the aloha and trying to. I'm going to keep trying to inspire the world. So thank you for joining me on the show today. And, and thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. For more information, please visit rustykomori.com. And my books are available on Amazon and Barnes & Noble. I hope that Danny and I will inspire you to create your own superior culture of excellence and to find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.